Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my YouTube channel Science for Everyone. Today the topic is related to uh, microbiology and the title of my today's lecture is Kogulay's test. Kogulay's test is basically a biochemical test and it is used to detect that either a special type of microorganism uh, is producing Kogulay's enzyme or not. Basically, uh, Staphylococcus aureus is a special type of microorganism. It is a gram-positive bacteria that is secreting a uh, coagulase enzyme and most of the coagulase is present over its cell wall and uh, due to that coagulase test, uh, it is performing a special type of activity. So when we are having an unknown uh, bacteria and when it shows us a co coagulation of the serum, so we can say that it is Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, although we will uh, we uh, we will also perform different other type of biochemical tests, but basically, if we are uh, we are detecting Staphylococcus aureus, so this is very much important test for it in order to identify it that either it is Staphylococcus aureus or not. Okay, so in the today's lecture, uh, I will discuss that what is basically a Kogulay's test and what is the mechanism of a Kogulay's test because uh, most of the uh, students are confused in this Kogulay's test that how what is the principle of it and what is the main mechanism of it so in today's video i will discuss the main mechanism of it and in the later video i will discuss each and every step that how you will perform a coagulase test okay so let's start with this uh, video lecture first of all you should know about uh, the principle of this test that uh, when we are having a coagulase enzyme for example, our bacteria, the, our unknown bacteria is producing an enzyme for, that is known as coagulase. So it can convert the fibrinogen that is present in the serum of the patient into fibrin or the serum can be of rabbit or other type of animals. Okay, we can take it, uh, but basically the suitable way is that we should take it from a rabbit. Okay, but uh, when there is no rabbit, so you can take it from the patient also. So first of all, uh, you, uh, uh, if our bacteria is having coagulase, so it will con convert the fibrinogen that is present in the serum of a person and it will convert it into fibrin and that fibrin then perform clotting okay how it is performing clotting i will uh, tell you in a minute so this is the basic principle if our bacteria is having coagulase so it will uh, coagulate the serum of that individual and we can say that this bacteria is having this bacteria is coagulate coagulase positive okay it is the main mechanism of it that uh, uh, basically if we are having a sample uh, uh, we are taking an inoculum of an unknown bacteria and it is having coagulase enzyme so the uh, when uh, we apply it on a serum so in the serum there is an uh, there is a molecule in a, a compound uh, basically it is known as prothr prothrombin okay so the coagulase combine with the prothrombin and basically here the coagulase is acting as an enzyme so it uh, uh, and the prothrombin is basically a substrate for it so that coagulase bind with the prothrombin and it is known as stephylo thrombin and just because of this binding it convert the prothrombin into thrombin and it is now known as an activated thrombin basically what is thrombin it is then uh, it converts it into a special type of enzyme and that enzyme is basically known as fibrinogenase okay so what happens that they uh, it the, the thrombin that has been activated from the prothrombin uh, structure so when it activated so it acts as a protease and it it acts as a protease and it converts the fibrinogen that is present in the serum into fibrin okay and fibrin have the active um, the ability to clot with each other okay so if we are having different type of fi uh, many type many fibrin in our serum so they can clot together and it can form a clotting factor okay it, it can perform a clot so just look here this is the structure of it for example we are having a fibrinogen okay and now due to the coagulase enzyme the throm the prothrombin that is present in the serum is converted into thrombin and just because of this thrombin the fibrinogen is converted into fibrin just look here these uh, black color arrows 
uh, it is removed from this fibrinogen and this the removal of this fibrin uh, this black arrows is basically the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin and when it is converted into fibrin so different fibrin can then uh, bind to each other and it can uh, it can cause coagulation and it can uh, it can form clots okay so this was all just because of the coagulase enzyme okay because the coagulase enzyme activate this thrombin okay that was present in the serum okay first it was prothrombin as i have told you and the you know, the introduction of that coagulase enzyme this prothrombin was converted into thrombin and just because of this thrombin the fibrinogen was cleaved and it was converted into fibrin and then different uh, all the fibrin that all the, all the fibrinogen that were converted into fibrin, then the fibrin can uh, clot with each other. That can they can attach to each other, okay, and they can form a clot, okay. So just um, smart thinking. When if there was no coagulase enzyme, so there was, will be no activation of the prothrombin into thrombin, the conversion of prothrombin into thrombin, and there will be no uh, conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin, okay. So and there will be no clumping uh, of that fib fibrin so this was all just because of this coagulase enzyme so uh, just honestly speaking that coagulase enzyme is uh, acting uh, indirectly okay in the coagulation of the uh, in the formation of the fibrin it is not contributing directly and it is not uh, directly uh, cleaving the uh, uh, cleaving the fibrinogen into fibrin it is just giving a helping factor and it is activating this thro prothrombin it is activating this prothrombin into thrombin and after that this thrombin can then convert the fibrinogen into fibrin so it is acting indirectly okay i'm writing indirectly so keep this keep this concept in your mind it is not acting directly it is acting indirectly so in this test this is the basic mechanism and this is the basic principle so a microbiologist should know about it that what is happening inside this test okay so uh, just because of this coagulase enzyme clumping can form uh, and uh, this all process hope you have understand it okay so uh, now we will come to the actual uh, procedure of it that how you will perform the coagulase test so first of all keep this thing in mind that um, uh, staphylococcus aureus some of the strength uh, have uh, two type of coagulase enzyme one is bound coagulase uh, bound coagulase is basically when the coagulase enzyme are embedded in the uh, in the cell wall of that uh, bacteria okay in the cell wall of that bacteria and it can uh, it could not be secreted outwards okay extracellularly so the bound uh, coagulase is basically mean this means that it is embedded in the cytoplasm uh, sorry in the cell wall and it is acting from there okay so for bound coagulase uh, we should uh, conduct slight test what is slight test i will now show you in a minute okay and the other is free coagulase uh, some strain of Staphylococcus aureus secrete uh, coagulase extracellularly, okay? So for this uh, free coagulase, we have to perform tube test, okay? So keep this uh, view in your mind and it is also important for the MCQ that for bound coagulase, we will perform slight test and for, for free coagulase, we will perform tube test, okay? Okay, so first we will discuss the slight test. So this is the procedure of it. First, you have to take uh, the blood from a, a volunteer. Okay, uh, for example, you are working in a uh, uh, you 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 uh, your examiner asks you that uh, conduct a coagulase test. So you can take the blood from yourself or you can take it from your friend. Okay, as a volunteer. Okay, but uh, keep this thing in mind. The best thing is that we should take rabbit uh, serum okay rabbit blood uh, it is uh, necessary after that what we will do we will place the blood in a vial and after that we will centrifuge it and we will take the plasma okay the plasma consists of the coagulase enzymes and all other such type of uh, sorry the thrombin and the fibrinogen okay so we will take the plasma of it uh, just because of the separating the plasma from the blood, red blood cell, we perform the centrifugation. After that, we will take uh, the, uh, the, the plasma, the serum from that uh, with the help of a uh, gesture or with the help of a knee, uh, syringe and we will uh, pour three drops of, uh, uh, three drops of uh, serum on a slide. 
after that we will take an inoculating loops there are different type of inoculating loop there must be wire type uh, this uh, iron type and we are also having plastic type that is disposable iron loops we can use it for only for one time so these are the inoculating loop we will uh, first we will then uh, sterilize it auto uh, we will just place the inoculating loop over the flame okay just to kill all the microorganism that is present on its surface just to uh, uh, just to take a clear result from it so we will uh, heat it up red hot it and after that we will take a colony an unknown colony we don't know that either it is coagulase positive or negative so we will take an unknown colony okay i have told you that it is just type of a plastic inoculating loop okay so it is it is possible we can use it one time so we are taking we will take a uh, colony from it and then we will we will rub it over that serum okay uh, uh in a clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction and then after some minute if there is clumping so we can say that this is coagulase test positive okay because we just look here these are the clumping of it uh, you can see it in a slide so this is uh, this is also an image of it and just look here if uh, the uh, all the three drops are showing positive result of it okay so this these all are coagulase positive okay uh if you look here to it in when you are working in a laboratory so you should take a control with it with it and a control is basically water and water does not consist of this thrombin and this fibrinogen so now uh, you have or uh, you should uh, you should uh, place the inoculating loop over the test also and then on over uh, you can mix it with the water so actually uh, we have to compare both the uh, uh, results of it in the water there is no coagulation so and if we are having coagulation in the test uh, organism so we can easily say that either it is uh, it ha have performed uh, it has done uh, clamping has been performed or not okay so just because of it we take the control uh, after that this uh, here is a tube method so tube method is all the same as the slide method but here we will use uh, glass tubes okay we will use glass tubes first uh, here what we will do we will take the serum okay we will take the serum uh, from the patient uh, as just like the blood and after that uh, uh, centrifugation and then as i have discussed in previously and then you will pour it then you will pour it in the okay so you will pour it in the uh, glass tube after that all the procedure is the same as i have discussed it you will take inoculating loop you will heat it up and then you will take a, an unknown colony and then you will dip it into the uh, glass tube and then you after um uh, uh, after uh, 10 or 15 seconds you will see the result so just look here this is a comparison of it in this slide uh, in this glass tube there is no coagulation so it is clear and here is a coagulation so you can compare it uh, with uh, the both slide uh, glass tubes with each other just look here this is an another image image of the uh, coagulation uh, uh when we are performing coagulase uh tube coagulase test in the laboratory so here we take uh, three uh, glass tubes uh, and we add 0 0.5 milliliter of diluted rabbit plasma uh keep this thing in mind uh, the plasma that we have we are taking from a patient or uh, for a from a volunteer or from a rabbit so first you have to dilute it because it consists of high amount of different other proteins so then it can give us too much turbidity and too much uh, other such type of results okay so first you have to uh, uh dilute it and in the uh, in the glass slide test there is no dilution okay but in the tube test you have to perform dilution so keep these two things in your mind that here will be the dilution uh serial dilution and there in the test uh, glass test uh, glass test uh, slide there will be no uh, uh this uh dilution so you have to take 0 0.5 milliliter of uh, diluted rabbit plasma uh, rabbit plasma uh, and after that you have to take uh, um, uh, 0 0.1 milliliter of test suspension here will be 0 0.1 milliliter of non staphylococcus aureus non here this means that it will show 
positive result and here will be a sterile both no no inoculating will be done okay so here we will take we will uh, inoculate the test tube okay and we will know that this uh, the colony that we add it or to this tube we will know that it is staphylococcus aureus and it is producing clumps okay so this this is just because of uh, for the comparison of it okay here we will take uh, uh, we will uh, we will perform no inoculation and here here we will take the test suspension okay the unknown bacteria and after that we will uh, check for the result okay so here the test or uh, when it is uh, positive so it will perform coagulation okay and if it is negative so it will perform no coagulation okay so you will invert uh, just a little bit invert the test tubes okay just like this okay just like this you will invert it so if it is just like a lumpy type and uh, 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 a little uh, bit lumpy lumpy type and there are small uh, dots so you can say that there is coagulation and if it is free moving uh, it is moving freely so you can say that it uh, there is no coagulation there no, you can also detect the turbidity of it if the uh, 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 the tube is turbid so you can say that uh, there is coagulation but, uh, and if there it is not uh, turbid so you can say that it is freely but the best thing is that you have to invert the test tubes and you will see the mobility of it okay so if it is highly mobile so you can say that there is no clumping and no coagulase uh, pro to, uh, it is coagulase negative and if there is clumping so you will say that it is coagulase positive okay so this was all about the coagulase test uh, i think hope you have understand it well about the principle of it about the main mechanism of it so these two slides are very much important especially this slide because you should know about the real mechanism of it that what is happening inside it after that all the uh, the, the procedure can be done by any person who is working in the laboratory but the main mechanism is this one okay so hope you have understand it well if you have any question in your mind so you can ask me in the comment box i will answer you there thanks for watching thank you very much god bless you